in the previous lecture we talked about integral form of Ampere's law and used del cross B equals mu naught j or its integral form which was B dot d L is equal to mu naught i enclosed by that loop to calculate magnetic field in certain symmetric situations. We would also said there the question we had raised was can we define a potential for magnetic fields. In this lecture we address this question. Recall that for electric fields we had curl of E equal to 0 and we use this to define a potential because curl of gradient is always equal to 0, one could write because of this condition that E is equal to minus gradient of V r, because this curl will always give you 0. Similarly, now we use in the context of magnetic field this equation that the divergence of magnetic field is always 0. Now, one can show that divergence of curl of a vector field is always 0. So, divergence of B is 0 implies that I can write B as curl of A of R. And therefore, now we can say that B can be obtained as the curl of another vector field A, which I am going to call the vector potential. So, in the case of electric field we had a scalar potential V r, which was also interpreted as the work done. In the case of magnetic field, it is the vector potential whose curl gives me magnetic field. Now, just like the V r was defined within a constant. What does that mean? That means that I could have V r or V r plus c, I could add a constant to V r, it still gave me the same electric field or the same physical quantity. In a similar manner, when I have magnetic field B r as curl of A r, I can also write this curl of A r plus gradient of some other quantity, let us call chi r, because curl of a gradient is always 0. And therefore, A r is defined within the gradient of a scalar field. So, just like the potential V had an arbitrariness of up to a constant, A r also has an arbitrariness up to the gradient of a scalar field. What about physical 
interpretation of A. Can I ask what does A mean? Recall that the potential in the case of electric field was the work required to move a unit charge in that electric field. Can I have a similar interpretation here? Well, the answer is not simple, but we can get some insight by looking at dimensions of A. A curl of it gives me B and therefore, A has dimensions of B times the length. B recall that we have Q V B equals force and therefore, B is force over Q V. Let us substitute that here and I get force times length divided by Q V as the dimensions of A and therefore, Q A has the dimension of F L divided by V I can write as time. F times T is momentum. So, Q A has dimensions of momentum, although it is not directly momentum of a particle or anything, but we later see that this does play a role. So, right now we leave it at that. Let us now take examples and solve some certain problems where we calculate the magnetic vector potential. Example 1, I will take a straight current carrying wire of infinite length. In this case, we just saw in the previous lecture that and we have calculated earlier also that B field looks like going around in circles like this and therefore, I can write B is equal to B at a distance s is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi s in the direction phi. This is nothing but curl of A. Since there is a cylindrical symmetry, I will use the definition of curl in terms of cylindrical coordinates and in cylindrical coordinates, since I want only the phi component, curl of A, A phi component is given as partial A s component z minus partial A z partial s. And this in our case happens to be equal to mu naught i over 2 pi s. This immediately suggests that I can take A s to be 0 and A z to be mu naught i over 2 pi log s with a minus sign in front you can immediately see this gives me the right answer for B. I can also choose A phi to be 0 and therefore, I can write in this case of an infinitely long current carrying wire A vector to be minus mu naught i over 2 pi log s in the z direction. Example 2. Let us take a uniform field B equals B z, so that it is like this everywhere. I am using Cartesian coordinates, so I am going to write this as x y z partial by partial x partial y partial z A x a y a z. I am interested in only z component, so there will be some x component. Let us write x component which is 
partial a z partial y minus partial a y partial z plus y component partial a x partial z minus partial a z partial x plus the z component which I am really interested in partial a y partial x minus partial a x partial y and this should be equal to this quantity. So, I want partial a x over partial y partial a y over partial x to be equal to b. You can immediately see there are th three different possibilities. I can take a y to be equal to b x by 2 and a x to be equal to minus b y by 2. So, that a vector is equal to b by 2 y x plus x in y direction, which I can write as b s by 2 phi with a minus sign. That is one possibility. Second possibility I can have a y equals b x a x equal to 0 oh, sorry I should have written a z equal to 0 here and a z equal to 0. So, I have a equals b x y or third possibility a y equal to 0 a x equals minus b y and a z equal to 0. So, that a is minus b x b y in the x direction. All these three possibilities give me the same answer for b. As I said earlier, they will all differ by quantities which are gradients of one or the other quantity. Let us now look at two particular cases. I had a equals minus b y over 2 in the x direction plus b x by 2 in the y direction and I also had a equals minus b y x. Let us take the difference. Let us call this a 1 a 2. a 1 minus a 2 is equal to b y by 2 x plus b x by 2 y and this you can clearly see is a gradient of b x y by 2. So, you have shown that the difference between the two vector potentials is equal to gradient of a scalar field. As the third example, let us calculate the vector potential for this current carrying sheet with current surface current being k equals k y. Let me remind you for this current carrying sheet the previous lecture I had x in this direction y going along the sheet and z going up. And the magnetic field B was given as k mu naught k over 2 x or mu naught k over 2 x with a minus sign. Right. So, let us calculate A for this. A gives me is such that it gives me field mu naught k over x or k mu naught k over 2 in the x direction for z greater than 0. x component is partial A z 
over partial y minus partial a y over partial z. So, I can immediately write that either a z is equal to mu naught k y over 2 and a y is equal to 0 or any other combination that gives me this answer. If you calculate the difference between these different a's again that will come out to be equal to gradient of a certain scalar field. 